I think initially there's definitely a fear, but you know, once you get on the stage, it just immediately goes away. And it's easy to sort of forget that there's like 10,000 people watching you. There's definitely a bunch of misconceptions about electronic music. You're not just pressing play. There's a very technical art form behind it. I'm Jai Wolf, and I make electronic music. This track is uh, one of the tracks I'm trying to finish up for my EP. It's mostly an instrumental, but it's like kind of like driven through vocal chops. A lot of like people have sort of taken note of uh, my heritage, so sometimes they'll bring like flags to the show, which is really cool. I'm originally from Bangladesh. I was born there in 91, and I came to America when I was a year old. We moved to Illinois, and we lived in Illinois for seven years. And then we moved to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and that's where I did like elementary school and middle school. Post 9-11, if you're like the only brown kid in a very white-centric school, you're gonna have a tough time for sure. I didn't really grow up having a lot of family in America. It's just me and my mom and my dad. My mom and my dad are the first of their both families to be in America. I speak fluent um, Bengali with my parents at home. I was really well versed in the culture and their history. It was never something that I neglected or was necessarily, maybe when I was younger, it, it, it is sometimes difficult to balance having two identities, I guess. There were sort of these two different musical upbringings that were happening simultaneously. My mom signed me up for violin lessons when I was a kid. So I was definitely really into a lot of Indian classical music and Bengali classical music. That was pretty much all I listened to up until I was 13. A lot of my um, Bengali friends were listening to a lot of hip hop at first. So some of the first things that I was getting into was like 50 Cent and Ludacris and Usher. My friend gave me a Green Day CD, it was uh, 2005, so it was like American Idiot. But I was really drawn towards kind of the melodies behind pop punk music. It was really catchy and sort of <laughs> emotionally driven. At some point, I liked the pop punk music so much that I was like, oh, I want to like learn how to play this and like perform it. So I picked up guitar and sort of taught myself. It's my freshman year dorm founders. That's where I stayed in 2009 to 2010. Basically, the worst music I ever made was probably in this dorm building. But yeah, this is kind of like the, the beginnings. I would say that a lot of the music I was making at first was really shitty, like super amateur sounding and not really mixed well. But I kind of worked at it. I worked at it for years, all throughout college, to the point where NYU didn't let me graduate at first because I, uh, I was slacking off so much in school for my studies, and I was skipping classes, like not, you know, not doing homework and just writing music all the time. There's just so much negative reinforcement that you're gonna get when you're, when you're starting off. Like, your friends are not gonna come to your shows. You're gonna beg them to like, please like, come, come out to this. But you kind of have to fight and power through it. And for me, it was a lot of, um, just telling myself repeatedly, like, this is what I want to do, and that I am good at this. I think there's something special here. Grammy winner! Grammy winner! Anytime somebody doesn't know who you are, I know they don't know music. Skrillex put out an album in 2014, and one of the songs I really enjoyed, um, it was Ease My Mind, and I sort of made this bootleg trap remix of it. My friend, Stefan, emailed it to Skrillex. Literally within the day, Skrillex tweeted at me, sick remix, which was really insane. And then a month later, Skrillex started playing it out at festivals. It was really wild because I made that song in my, in my basement, basically. Skrillex's label, Alza, wanted to like sign it and make it into an official remix. He was also on tour at this time, too, and at one of the tour dates, his team invited us out to hang out. He did the show and he brought me on stage when he played the song. which was like, just easily like number one moment of my life. 
That's when things took a big turn. That was when we knew it was like, this is getting real right now. The ball just started rolling really, really fast. In 2014, I had played 12 shows total. It's about once a month. As the year progressed in 2015, it was just show after show after show. It was almost like three months ahead in advance. We were just getting booked, and it was nonstop. We got the Doolab stage at Coachella, which was really insane because it was literally the first festival I played. I think that was the most nervous I'd ever been in my life. I felt like throwing up that day. It was really crazy. And even though I was really nervous, like, it was a really cool experience for sure. And that was my first taste of, like, playing to a really big crowd. At some point, we were like, we need to put out an original song. Indian Summer was sort of an amalgamation of my Bengali heritage, listening to a lot of Bengali classical music, fused with my love for electronic music. The cool thing about that song was that it was extremely organic. It hit a million plays really quickly, like within three weeks. You know, I was doing this EDM stuff before, but I think I want to make more music that sounds like this, like Indian Summer. I'm not going to front, like it was definitely for a long time, I thought I was going to be like a one-hit wonder because it was the only thing I had for a long time. And when a song does really well like that, you have the luxury where you're not pressured to continuously put out music because people are still digesting what you made. You will have people who will tell you you're not good enough. You're entering a profession where you will not make a lot of money. You're going to be starving for the rest of your life. And when you hear those things, it's so easy to give up on something that you, in your heart, feels truly passionate about.